Get ready for the Girls on Games podcast, your weekly dose of news, reviews, and everything video games. Always served with a good helping of hype and just a pinch of salt. And now, your host, Leah. Welcome to another Girls on Games podcast. My name is Leah. I'm the host of this show. This is episode number 439. And this week, there was a whole bunch of like presentations and events and, and days and stuff last week. The Xbox Partner Preview dropped. It was Mario Day yesterday, at the day of this recording. That would be March 10th. How convenient. M A R 10. So we got a few announcements there, and we're going to talk about all that. But before we get into that, I want to introduce you to the friendly voices around this digital table. Catherine, how you doing? I'm good I'm yourself. Excellent. Thank you. Joelle, what's up? Hello, hello. I'm Hi. just, you know, uh, do, doing my thing and keeping it real. <laughs> Love it! <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, let's get through some housekeeping and then get into the crew check-in. As always, if you enjoy this show, you can subscribe. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Podbean. If you'd like to get some GOG merch, you can do that by going to designbyhumans.com slash shop slash girls on games. Or maybe you'd like to give us a tip, maybe buy us a coffee. You can do that by going to our Kofi. That's ko-fi.com slash girls on games. Ladies, I have been very, very busy this week because uh, tomorrow a big project launches for me, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, it has been a bit of a uh, working full tilt, so not super exciting uh, activities or anything. So I'm hoping I can live vicariously through you. Catherine, what were you at this week? I, I did two oh, things. Two! Ooh, two! Two things. So on Friday, we had our team building activity. So for context, every year we hold a a Christmas decoration contest on my project, and we built big Christmas robots, like a robot family around a Christmas tree, and we won, and we used that money to do a team building. Uh, Essentially, you win money, but it's like budget money. (laughs) It's not money. It's not real money. Funny money. Yeah. Shoot bucks. Exactly. It's <laughs> shoot bucks. It's corporate corporate money that needs to be put yes. in a Excel spreadsheet. Yes. So uh we did an escape room. Ooh. Ooh. Uh and I was like they were like, Oh, you can't do the ones you've done before and I'm like, I've done like two, so I'm fine. We get there. Um and we're like there's like six of us and we decide to do uh, or seven and we decide to split into groups and whatever and you know, they go like, Oh, let's do a girl team and guy team and we're like cool and i go into the girl team and i'm like oh no i've done this one before so i was like i'm gonna go hang out with the boys plot twist um the room that they had the boys were gonna do um was a bit like horror theme the concept was there's a, a a a a girl who was murdered and her spirit is stuck in the room and you have to like solve puzzles to uh, free her soul. You're getting a visceral reaction uh, out of I don't like Joelle it. right now. She's just shaking <laughs> her head like, no, nope, no. Nope. don't like it. Because my colleague, uh, so it's the UI art team and the VFX team. We got together to do this um, because they're like, we're two small teams and like our boss is basically the boss of these uh. two teams. So the guy who was talking shit on the VFX team that was like, let's like, which one's going to be the winning team, blah, blah, blah. After five seconds, fucking noped out because we were starting to do the room and I'm like, I got into it. Like, I thought I was going to be chicken. I was not. Um, And at one point we're like, oh, yeah, Um, they had shown us a few things around like the manor and then we got in the room. Um, So basically when they did the intro, they dropped us clues. So we had we could leave the room to do stuff outside of the room. So that was part of like the like the the thing. We weren't locked in a room. And basically how to get clues is we were talking to this the disembodied body of this Ugh. ghost. Which is, you know, an employee on a microphone. Yeah. You know, no. <laughs> in, a, in a room somewhere. But yeah, so we step out to go see. Oh, yeah, they're asking us for like a pendulum and like a book and a photo. So we saw it in the foyer. So we get out. And we see my colleague sitting on the couch. And we're like, what are you doing, bud? He's like, nope. 
I'm not doing this. I'm like, okay. Um, and I hate horror games, but I was like, my colleagues were like, the plot twist was he got scared and Catherine was fearless because at one point they're like, oh, what are these holes? And I just stuck my hands in it and I'm like, oh, I can feel a statue. Um, and, you know, we feel the statue. Uh, it's tied to other statues. We get a code. We punch it in. A little door opens and like you have to crawl through it. And they're like, oh, they didn't have time to say, oh, Catherine, don't do it. You have a bad back. I'll go. I'm already halfway through it. I'm like, guys, there's a room back here. Something's written in blood on the wall. <laughs> okay. So the note to self, if we have to survive like the zombie apocalypse or some other chaos or whatever, pull Kat in. Because she, she like the fight or flight, she's just fight, full fight the whole time. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, I think with actual horror, I'd be... I'd be flight. Um, I always figured if the zombie apocalypse comes, I'm just going to lay face first in the ground and oh. just <laughs> fucking let them take over. That's if I'm not patient zero You're to like, begin I with. I want to be the zombie. Wow. Like, honestly, wow. it's it's a game of numbers here. Um, but yeah, uh, no, I was really into wow. it. Wow, that's impressive. Um, and yeah, it, it was really fun. Ooh, cool. But it's like you, you start to see I like I get how it can be unnerving but for me all I saw was the puzzle oh sure yeah yeah Yeah. and like you know when I do puzzle games like (laughs) I think it's one of the reasons I was able to go over the spookiness of control because like it was more like it wasn't scary it was more like you know thriller or horror adjacent but like they threw puzzles at me so quick that i was like i gotta solve this (laughs) you know so when this this little disembodied voice was like you need to find the four relics and put them in the little cubicles and then we're gonna do a ritual and you're gonna save my soul i was like bet where do we start (laughs) it's there are different types of scary too that I've started yeah. to realize too. Like spooky, scary monsters, that kind of stuff is one thing. Yeah. Psychological stuff like Saw and whatever that human centipede movie is like, nope. And gore. <laughs> I can't do yeah. Gore's just gross. It's just yeah. gross, right? Yeah. But anything that's just like spooky, like ghosts yeah supernatural is like a no 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 go for me oh yeah yeah, no no that doesn't bother me um but yeah it jump scares and it's not about the jump scares itself it's the apprehension that you know that one's coming like one of the uh, did you guys ever see what lies beneath no with harrison no like these no that's the kind of shit i saw the first saw movie and i've never been the same since there's like one jump scare in the whole thing, but it's a great movie, but it's more yeah. a thriller than it is mm. like a okay. horror movie, right? Is it like Silence of the Lambs? No. It's like I, oh, no. Okay. And that's I, like a psychological but, one. Like any of yeah. the ones where it's like people versus people, like The I Purge and shit like that, where I'm just like, no. But like, oh, I can I, do that. I, I don't like, like, I like American Horror Story when they're the ones like Hotel oh. or the Coven right. one or something like that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> But I can't. I can't do any of those like. You're like polar opposites. No, I'm like no. I don't want that at all. But really, it's like, no. Uh, but I like those. Something... But it started. But like you said, Cat, mm-hmm. in the beginning, when a lot of those stuff, like it's say American Horror Story, in the beginning, it's like you're grossed out a bit. But then you start to learn the characters, and you start to think about more about the story or the plot or whatever, and yeah. the scary shit takes a back seat to it yeah and i think that's what a lot of other people like too where it's just like that's just it's part of the window also this wasn't like because i know there are horror-based escape room where there are people that will grab like you'll put your hand in something Ah. and somebody will grab you or they'll come scream like Like haunted uh, mansion or whatever that you walk through yeah Yeah. and they do haunted mansion and escape room and they put it together uh that was not it it was just horror theme you know at one point uh, we kind of like do this ritual to invoke a demon and then, you know, the lights close and, mm-hmm. you know, you get black lights and then you get to see other clues and shit and it gets a bit scary. Like it, it kind of like when it happens, I'm like, oh, but I'm more like, you know, it's kind of like when you get the code and, you know, the, the suitcase opens or the safe opens, just like, like, I got it. It's just like, so when the lights closed, we were like, oh, we got it. And then I was like, okay, spooky shit. Like, do my, <laughs> my tattoos close in the dark? No. Okay. What, what's the next? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. No, uh, I'd be I'd be with so, your colleague. We'd be we'd be hanging out in the lobby together. Yeah. Can you guys play Last of Us? No. No. Okay, see, I can do Last of Us. I got halfway uh, through. Cl- but in a real zombie apocalypse, though, no, I'm there. Like, I'm starting a cult. Like, I'm... I'm <laughs> Give me all the shotguns. Yeah, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create an army of people between me and the... Like, I'm going to be that person in, in oh, real life. Okay. But, like... I don't. I don't want to do it if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I'll survive if I absolutely have to. Basically. What else did you cat? Uh, uh, I went and did a hockey. That's right. Ooh. You went and saw the P W A W P H L. That's how. The Women's Professional Hockey Yay. League. Um, so we went to catch a match between Montreal and Ottawa. Ottawa won. Uh, but yeah, so we went with uh, Simon. Like I went myself, my spouse, Simon, and his girlfriend Ari. Um, we got the tickets back like in December, I want to oh. say. Uh, but yeah, like honestly, like it was at Place Belle in Laval. Uh-huh. Amazing venue. Yeah, I know. It's honestly. so nice. Like so much room yeah. in your seats and and like and like Simon's and Pascal, they're both big dudes and they're both tall. They are, yeah. Like Simon's like six two, and he was like, "Yo, I got enough room for my legs and my feet. Like this is nice." And you know, and he was like, "If we were at Bell Center, like me and Pascal would be like touching like shoulders, we'd be like Ugh, super squeezed." And he was like, "No, this is nice, really nice." And like he said that like for all four of us of our tickets, like it was under a hundred dollars. Before wow. tax or with tax, and we were like straight behind the goal. That's like nice. we were, we had really good seats. Um, it won't be that cheap forever because uh, they're no, doing so good. But like people yeah, are loving that honestly, league. Yeah, good. because like a lot of people are talking like, "Oh, it's not NHL level hockey." I'm like, nothing is NHL no, level hockey except the NHL. Yeah, no, it's Olympic hockey. Yeah, it's Olympic because the the, these are Olympians. Are, are Olympians. <laughs> Exactly. Um, it's it's like catching, you know, the AHL it's, or it's yeah, you know, the hockey. major, the major yeah. junior. Yeah, it is. It's just like yeah. they're not like the fine tuned athletes. But I, honestly, I think you give this league enough time, um. and it will become to that level. Because think about it: like how many people, like how many of these hockey players, kind of fall off after they do their first Olymp, they do their Olympic games yeah. because they got to get jobs or whatnot. Yeah. You know, like how, like you can't curate to have the best athletes when it comes to like the Olympics in Canada. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, you don't get the financial support. Mm-hmm. In. So, uh, but no, it was still like very entertaining. The place was popping. It was full. Like I think they said we were like ten thousand seven hundred and twelve, and I think it seats about eleven thousand. That's great. That's so, great. Uh, they had a DJ to do sets in between and she she brought the tunes like mm. you know like barbie girl mm, and uh, venga boys uh some classic Celine Dion. um <laughs> of course gotta be said yeah she had the she had the place popping and um what warms my heart is i've never seen so many little girls at a sporting Aww, event there I were know. more little girls than there were little boys i love that I gotta ask you a question because there was something going around TikTok, yeah. and I don't know if they put it into practice yet. But maybe you could tell me: mm. Were the names of the players on the jerseys below the numbers? No, they still had the name up okay. top because that's the Molson. Yeah, thing? so Molson's doing this thing to put some context into it. Molson is, yeah. you know, usually when you have hockey teams or whatever, you don't see this so much in the NHL, but you do in other places like over in Europe and stuff where they are wearing logos um, on their jerseys of their sponsors, right? And the thing with yeah. women's hockey is that a lot of these girls have long ponytails, and you can't fit that inside your your uh, your helmet. So mm-hmm. I remember many a day that I'd have like a, a bun in the nape of my neck or my hair hanging down, um, and it would cover the name of the player so what molson did is and since they're the jersey sponsor they said no wait we'll cover our name so they inverted it so that the player's names are now going to be on the bottom below the mm. numbers and mm. the molson logo is going to be mm. on the top and partially obstructed by some of the women's hair yeah. but i just thought that was like fucking smart yeah. uh, <laughs> molson's the sponsor for like 
New York. Yeah, something like and that. I know they're a Canadian they're a Canadian company, but they're like the teams that we saw were sponsored by Canadian Tire. That makes sense. Yeah, mm. the Canadian teams probably are sponsored by Canadian Tire. But yeah, maybe it might be. Well, a, I think the main might, might, might be the, official. Most of the thing league is sponsored. It. You know what I mean? That has yeah. to be a league decision. But they don't yeah. have like team mascot names or logos or anything right yet. They're just going by Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto. Like they're not going by that yet. And New I York. actually think it's really smart to like build up the momentum and then it, I remember when the uh, Growlers came in and the Ice Caps came in uh, in St. John's uh, after the Baby Leafs had left. Uh, when we used to have the the St. John's Maple Leafs, the AHL team, and mm-hmm. there were like competitions for community members to submit like ideas for names for the team, right? And I could see them do that now for the women's team if they wanted to like you know put it out there and see if if anybody wanted to come out, help you know help as a contest or whatever come up with a name right so it'd be kind yeah. of cool so you take ownership of the team on your region first right and you really get there because i don't yeah. i haven't really yeah. seen any like was there merch or anything there cat that you could buy yeah oh, cool okay yeah yeah and like uh i went to the bathroom after the second period mm-hmm. and like where we were were like next to, like the snack bar and the merch mm-hmm. And there was a bath. It was just like a mess of lines mm. everywhere. Uh, they were like organized. It's just I was like, why is there so many people here? And then I realized there was like the snack bar behind yeah. the merch there. Um, and yeah, like uh, Ari bought a jersey and she said it was like 60 bucks. Nice. That's good. For an official jersey. Yeah. And I think they're like Adidas yeah, or something. Or, like, to- or one of those brand yeah. names. I don't yeah. know who's doing it because Adidas is doing the NHL right now. But I don't think they have yeah. it next year. Um, I know that from Mike. I think it's fanatic. But it was it was like whomever does the jersey for the yeah. girls did the jersey that were sold. So I I forget if it's Adidas Reebok, like insert yeah. big big ass like sports brand name here. I, I it might be Bauer. Yeah. Is Bauer, do- Bauer maybe? Because Bauer's doing doing their equipment. Maybe. Because I know during the game they were like, Thank you for our sponsor, Bauer Hockey and yeah. Pin Tire and blah blah blah. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, it was honestly, it was a good time. Um, Simon and I parked their car near here. I went, I had bought us metro tickets in mm-hmm. advance mm-hmm. because it's in Laval. Mm-hmm. So we need a different type of ticket. So I just got tickets for everybody in advance. So we skipped that line too. Um, and Place Belle is just like across the street from the last metro in Laval. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the game ended. We kind of puttered around, went to the bathroom, let a few car, like trains go by and then grabbed metro and it's like from here like i'm around chantalon so like it's it's not very far from laval and then we got here uh we brought them to our little sushi place that recently reopened after being burned Mm -hmm. down uh the lady remembered us asked about my mom because my mom used to go there all the time of course um and then we had some good food and we just talked about the game and it was uh yeah honestly it was a very good it's such a great activity and honestly there's not a lot of affordable, accessible activities like this yeah. in Montreal because, like, you know, it's the same in Toronto. Like, the Habs and the Leafs are out of price. Do not get like, me started one, on how much it costs to go to a, a Leafs game. It's obnoxious. And it's it's a lottery to start getting the tickets. Like, oh, getting wow. Hab tickets or getting Taylor Swift tickets, same fucking problem. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I know the Leafs is the same issues. And basically all the big teams, like the Boston Bruins and everything. Yeah. Um, this is affordable. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And accessible. Mm-hmm. You can go by transit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's off enough island that people that live in the burbs can kind of get to yeah. it. It's um, not like trying to get downtown, parking downtown, and eating downtown. And exactly. All go to an event. Yeah. And it was. It looked pretty family friendly because a lot of people had their kids. I th- and I think that's how huh? they've geared it to be too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I think it, yeah. I think it's great. I think they're gonna like it's just gonna blow up. It is loud though, so if you bring your kids, do bring the like a lot of people had babies with the noise canceling oh, yeah. uh, headsets and and things like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But you had like a bunch of little girls just wearing their team's hockey jersey and going to Aww. see this game as a team. So I was just like, I was like, oh my god! And of course, like you know, it's International Women's Right Month, and it was International Women's Right Day on Friday. Oh, you went on Friday. We're there on set. Su- and, no, we went on okay. Sunday, but they were doing like all week. They were doing presentations oh, and things like nice. that, and yeah. uh, you know, like celebrating women in sports and everything. And I was just like, this makes this warms my cold dead heart. Like honestly, like 
And in front of us, there was like this, this lady was there with her, uh, her dad and her, her little girl who was dressed like in full princess garb, but she was into it. She wanted to see the hockey game, but she was a princess, a hockey princess. Um, and their big thing was trying to get on the jumbotron. So, you know, they were dancing at every dance break and they got on the jumbotron and the girl was like, this was the best thing ever. I got on the jumbotron. I was like, see, wholesome. <laughs> activities yeah, love it if you're in yeah. minnesota actually and you want to because they play in the states um but yep, they do they uh the affordability of the tickets is also very good like i just looked at the one for well minnesota against montreal and there are quite a few seats left um ticket prices range all the way from 19 uh dollars to i think like 65 only a few left on those but you're going to get – it's at the Excel Energy Center is where we get all of our hockey. And um, they kept it on the first rung, so n- no bad seat in the house. But, yeah, there's still tickets available for that too. So I'm pretty sure they sco- sold out the Scotiabank Arena here. They played Toronto versus Montreal. Yeah. Cool. And they sold out. Yeah, that's yeah. where the Leafs play. So Excellent. Yeah. That is the yeah, they haven't... second biggest arena in the NHL. I think Montreal is technically the biggest. Uh, or is it, isn't it the one in, uh, No, the Canadian arenas are bigger, oh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because they're both kind of new. Internet! Biggest yeah, but, uh, arenas see, they in ha- NHL. They haven't done the Bell Center Dallas here yet? Dallas freaking Texas! No, hold on. <laughs> I was gonna Bell say. Center. No, Bell Center, Montreal, Quebec, 21,000, everything else is smaller. Hold on, hmm. let me see. Oh. Let me see. Uh, capacity. Go. I'm doing my capacity. It's the Bell Center. The Bell Center is the biggest. 21,105. Okay. United Center in Chicago, Illinois is 19. Wells Fargo is 19. Uh, let's see. Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa is 19. 347. That's one, two, three, four, fifth. Uh, wow. Wow. Ter- ter- Toronto was low. It's only 18,800. Maybe that's why the ticket prices are so hmm. expensive. <laughs> Maybe because the big thing about them closing the forum and doing the Bell Center was to like something like double the capacity. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. The like f- ugh, seriously, like in the top, it's like Montreal, Chicago, Philadelphia, Detroit. We're talking. That's a lot of like b- big no, hockey the cities. Six, the original six: um, Ottawa, yeah. Calgary, Florida. Surprising. Tampa Bay, though hockey's freaking big there because they've been winning like cups like nobody's business that's because the snowbirds from canada go there and watch Mm -hmm. the leafs in montreal and montreal play florida vancouver toronto like that's all the canadian teams oh no edmonton oilers has eighteen thousand, and like they're all like close it's all in the 18 19 but montreal is the only one where it breaches 20 even 21 by 2105 uh 105 yeah and that must include like the the business boxes like the corporate boxes yeah, it usually includes the boxes, but anyway, uh, all that to say, uh, they haven't played Bell Center in Montreal. I don't know if they will this year because you know Bell Center is a very coveted uh, venue. They will at some like, point. Not- it's, it's big enough. Yeah. They will. I, I'm I'm happy and kind of pleasantly surprised that they did it in Toronto this year because Toronto also like in terms of like a concert venue and a sports venue, like it's a very coveted venue. Yeah. It- so I don't know if that was the one that they tested to see if, like, the other venues would, like, dip and host a game. Yeah. I'm actually surprised. You want to know the smallest arena? Mullet uh-huh. Arena in Tempe, Arizona for the Arizona Coyotes. Oh, wow. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, Winnipeg. How much is Winnipeg it? Is, is low, too. They have 4,600. Oh. That's smaller than Place Belle. <laughs> uh, Canada Life Center in Winnipeg, Manitoba for the Winnipeg Jets is 15,321. Okay. Yeah. It also has to do with like the area too. Like, think about Arizona. Yeah. Like, how many people? Like, hockey can't be super big there. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Winnipeg is like and I'm, you have I'm to sorry. Think about it, it's, it's in the peg. It's far. It's I cold. hate. I hate to. I hate to say this. Winnipeg is not a metropolis. <laughs> That's the word, Winnipeg. Sometimes they have to be. Re- <laughs> Winnipeg and Edmonton sometimes have to remind be reminded that they're a city, not a metropolis. I mean, Montreal barely qualifies as a metropolis. Mm. So, it's because of all the the stuff it, touching it, they do like the Greater yeah. Montreal area, like the the GTA, the Greater Toronto area. Oh, even even Montreal proper is like a couple of million people's three. So it is a metro. Yeah, if you get into the GTA, yeah, it comes oh, yeah. into like 
10, whatever. But the actual core is enough to be considered a metropolis. Here, but it's yeah. like on a metropolis scale, it's still like tiny. Yeah. Like my colleague that comes from Seoul, South Korea, he's like, you guys are adorable. I'm like, I know. We got all I know. this land, all this space <laughs> for activities. I know. <laughs> Joelle, what were you up to this week? I went and saw Dune. Oh, Ooh, what did how you was think? It? The, fir- the second one, right? Yeah, the second one, yep. You mm-hmm. saw the first one? Saw the first one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so and? Saw, saw the second one. And? Um, I, it was long. <laughs> it's a dude. It's, it's a long, yeah. it's a long movie. Uh, so, it, it was, it was good. Um, I feel like a lot happened and nothing happened at the same time. So, um, I think like if you're if you're a fan, it, it was well done. The cinematography was gorgeous. Um, the um, acting was was great. I thought. I just I feel like though they had to pack in a lot of plot, um, and I, I guess like I only read the first half of the of, of the Herbert book just because it was the writing style was a little bit tough for me to get through. Um, and I say this like as an avid reader, and it just it just kind of wasn't wasn't my bag. So I could I could kind of see a little bit of like the writing style and having to punch in a bunch of plot points. Um, there was just kind of some major plot twists that they kind of brushed over, like they didn't really give a moment, and you're like, what? Like did that? Did they just say what I thought they said? And then uh, uh, it moved kind of it just kind of kept moving. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad I saw it. I'm, I'm sure there's gonna. There has to be a third one, because left on a cliffhanger. Yeah, it was like, well, no, there has to be another one. Um, but the, I thought like the way that they handled all that they had to had to do was was great, and the introduction of the new characters I thought was fun, and creatively it's beautiful. So like you know, artistically as a film, like it's 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 gorgeous to to watch. Um, and uh and compelling in that way so yeah cool yeah my buddy went and saw it but he didn't see the first one so what he did his tiktok review was kind of interesting (laughs) oh that would be i think that would be tough he was like i just went in there blind wow (laughs) it was john cat you should watch his tiktok review it's funny he was like i was hoping for the bucket he didn't get the bucket because everyone was talking about that sand creature oh yeah that was weird oh, yeah. yeah the weird bucket, bucket. yeah the bucket yeah the oh, bucket did he see the first one no or was he just that's it. No. i <laughs> i Dude, don't know like... how he understood anything that happened then because Stop, like it's not you know. it's, it's not just about the movie you know it's based on a very famous sci-fi novel tri- yeah. series, trilogy yeah. or series, series. Yeah. or is it uh-huh. is it three or four books i forget anyway uh, that's a for sure, it, it, three. Yeah, it's like going to see the second Lord of the Ring movie. It's like it having bro. no context. Yeah, no, you really yeah. should. Yeah. You're not gonna one. have a good time. <laughs> no, it's very much a serialized narrative. Like, with a, and it and it drops thread. you kind of right in. Because yeah, I was yeah. I was kind of hoping they would do like a, a little recap. <laughs> Last week no. on Dune. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Let's catch you up. Like, just even, like, a quick, like, With, hey, with yeah. a skip recap a la Netflix yeah. in the yeah. corner. Netflix. No, yeah. no. It was like, oh, here we go, boop. Like, we're just going to go, we're just going right for it. And I was like, oh, all right. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think, I mean, nothing. It was just, it was also just long. It was long, you know. So, yeah. we, good thing we went kind of in the morning so that. I was a little worried we were going to go on Saturday night, but I'm like, I don't think it's a good idea to go to a movie that's three hours long at six, because it's just going to be an expensive nap. So I was like... (laughs) (laughs) Expensive (laughs) nap! (laughs) So, uh, but no, it was, you know, and and I like coming to those movies, I I don't see nearly as many movies as I used to, mostly just because of time and then the cost. Um, yeah, and I spend so much money on streaming services. So, uh, yeah. so when I go though, I like to have the experience. Like we saw it like in IMAX and the, the, with the sound yeah. and all that stuff. So that that was neat. Um, so like if you're gonna go see it, I think that would be the great way to see it. But you know what other movie that we watched because it was free on Peacock, Oppenheimer. Oh, which yeah. I just won an yet. Oscar. Yeah, and also long. Also very long. <laughs> and so Christopher Nolan, the director, shot that 
in a very specific way with specific film for it to be shown on IMAX. Right. Like, he yeah. specifically wanted you to watch the movie on IMAX. Yeah. Okay, so we're watching the movie, and, like, in the first 30 minutes, the his close-ups on people, the frame is very tight. Mm-hmm. And so the, the faces are big. And, and I, I have a 75-inch TV. It's so like you get these faces and, you know, and they're very distraught because it's a very serious movie. And I thought to myself, I'm actually really glad I didn't see this in IMAX because it's going to be like Killian Murphy's face in IMAX <laughs> looking distraught for the whole time. Three hours and I, straight. And I was just like, everyone's face is serious. And I thought this, I'm, I'm actually glad I saved myself that experience because it's really intense. Like, honestly, there's this guy and Denis Villeneuve who does Dune. They're like, you need to see this in cinema. Yeah. And now I'm like, fuck, fuck both of you. Because I went to see Dune in cinema without subtitles and I missed half of the dialogue because like my, ha- like as you get older, like as soon as there's like, too much noise like around you can't hear people talking anymore and it's like if you want me to be in there fix your audio balance and mm. make sure and just that the music is not louder is not louder than the, the I just yeah. don't want to leave just, my house i have yeah. my dog my yeah. own food i yeah, can okay. drink booze i have my own bathroom i can pause it and take breathers mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, the other day i looked i went into paramount plus and mean girls is already there mm-hmm. and then i went over to crave and wonka's already there mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and i'm like yeah, like, it's it's nice to do the experience. Like you know, once in a while, I go to the movie with my girlfriend yeah. Uva, and you know, yeah. we do the VIP experience we did for Barbie and whatnot. But yeah. it's like for a lot, of, and like she wanted to go see Dune, but she then she realized like it's opening weekend, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, girl, like pump the brakes. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> if you want me to go see this in theater with you, like you gotta wait until like at least everybody and their grandma already saw it once. Yeah, yeah, um, it's so yeah. packed. But yeah, I'm very much like I need subtitles. Now. Yeah, I can't. I watch most or shows headphones. with subtitles. Mo- like I just there's something about it just to make sure that I like catch what's going on. Oh, I don't yeah. know if I'm just overstimulated or what it is. Or no, too many no, metal there, shows. Too many metal arti- shows. Actually, there was an article coming out that's like says it's not you, it's sound design. Um, oh, thank God. And it's just like yeah, sometimes there's just like yeah, the dialogue gets too low like you know people do the acting and they go really low but it's like you did you forgot to boost the volume during that yeah, part they didn't mix it yeah. they didn't yeah. mix it right yeah that's the word mix thank you and then uh-huh. you know like and then you change scene and the mm-hmm. sound is way too loud like it's yeah. there's a problem in mixing and then of course i think maybe they're mixing for like theaters and then you're at home with like a you don't yeah. have a home theater you like a spe- 7.1 Dolby surround sound <laughs> yeah. THX like, I, mega mix <laughs> you know I just have a TV hooked into this one sound bar that's yeah. all yeah. Yeah. and it's like is it the best case scenario no am I going to do something about it absolutely not I'm going to turn on subtitles <laughs> Yeah, and I just tell find you it to hard. go fuck yourself. I just find it hard time some, and I do this in games too. So I'm yeah. bringing it all back around. Remembering characters' names, I need yes. the yeah. subtitles for the freaking names, especially when you start getting into the fantasy stuff and everything yeah. starts like the names start to sound the same, or they're all like A letters or something. Like that. And I'm just like, oh my god. So yeah, yeah. so yeah. The, definitely because we're watching Sopranos again and oh. like remembering all all the characters because lot of characters in that show Mm -hmm. and uh yeah thank god for the subtitles so the business insider i remember i read this article it was talking about like that millennials and gen z 63 percent of people watch uh things with subtitles on while they're watching it in their native language so like, oh, yeah. it's just, it's so popular compared to when they're looking for like people over 45, they only do it 37% of the time. And folks that are even older do it less than that. So like, yeah. it's interesting, like we're the generation that's using the subtitles like all the time. You want to know why? Because we have no fucking attention span. That's we're true. overstimulated by so many things. I'm like on my phone, watching the dog, also watching TV all at the yeah. same time. I need the subtitles so that I like clue in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it's also like just so you can hear things and mix it. Like right now we're we're catching up on seasons of Letterkenny and we don't have the subtitles on. And I'm just like, sometimes Wayne says something and I'm like, what'd you say, bud? 
<laughs> well, they sound like newfies, so I don't mind it too much. Sometimes when they speak, I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, it, just... but it's, it, it, you know, it, it's it's true. There's so many accents, so many things. And fast talkers. Yes. Oh, like, uh, yeah. yeah. No, it's... And then when they get into the jokes, you know, when the, you know, like uh, the skids where they just go like, Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. Stuart. <laughs> like he just goes so Or the so guy... Hard. The guy that the the, the oh, what's his name now? I don't remember the name. Of his name. He talks kind of like Boomhauer, and he runs it all together. He and his uh, wife, McMurray. McMurray, yeah, like the, the, the two McMurray uh, speak. You know? Yeah, they like they need subtitles, permanent. Subtitles. Honestly, yeah, because his <laughs> wife is fucking slosh the entire time, exactly. so she's talking with this thick Canadian accent, super fast and slurred. <laughs> yeah, and I think yep. the point is that they're both kind of unintelligible, but like for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah. Seriously, that's a show that you need subtitles for. Yeah. Honestly, yes. Anyway, all that to say, if you still love the in theater experience, good on you. You won't find us there. We're going to leave the room for you. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I only I only go for very specific like movies that I think it'll be worth it, like to watch yeah. it in that experience, you know. Yeah. And um Was Dune 2 worth it? I think that if you uh, are a fan of the series and, like, want to experience, you know, the worms in the cinematic mm-hmm. way, um, like, I think, yeah, it was worth a $15 ticket. But, like, if, if you're a little more apathetic or on the fence, then, no, I'd, I'd wait. Um, mm. But it, it was it was a cool theater experience. And some of the sound, um, uh, 3D audio in some places were, were really fun. So like that was like that was fun. So there there was some other things that I enjoyed that was a little bit, you know, more theatrical that you you don't get at home. Um, that I thought was really well done. That made me appreciate it, it, the art, like the art of the film. That's mm. kind of like maybe how you have to go into it as as mm. in that mindset. Cool. Um, okay. This is usually when we go and check out the Fantasy Critic. Uh, Girls Like Game podcast, no change. Nothing at all. No gun of our games came out. No one bought or purchased or bid on anything. So, uh, no change. Um, let's go look at the, uh, community. I think maybe first and second pivoted, because Pat's now at the top. So we've got Pat, then Darth, then Offshore Media. Meteor than myself, then Jessica Starr, Ross Vanier, Phoenix, Albany, Stainsby, Kingsby, and Zang Pao. Um, I'm trying to see if any... No, this is all the same. These games were all the same. Do, do, do. Skull and Bones had already came out. Maybe Unicorn Overlord that Pat had. That's probably what pushed him up because that came out... Um, they got 88 critic so he got 18 points for that okay dude the grumpy grandpa games like you're either gonna have a really nice run here or that's yeah that's phoenix <laughs> he's going he's he's got a run he's got three games in a row yeah They're all coming out 19th 20th and 22nd that's mm-hmm, impressive yeah. let's see if there's any anybody bought anything we had some action on march 9th um so grumpy grandpa picked up unknown Nine Awakening with a bit of seven bucks. Ross's cool games for attractive people um, acquired. Kin- Hold on, Konitsu Gami Path of Goddess with a bit of seven bucks. And Zhang Pao tried to acquire Unknown Nine Awakening with a bit of five dollars, but was outbid. So yeah, that's where we stand. I need to go pick up games. I am severely behind. Uh, let's talk about what everybody's playing. Catherine Coral Island still treating you well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What's your I latest ha- adventure? I didn't play much because uh, <clears throat> I was out doing True. stuff. True. Uh, <clears throat> but I started. Uh, I started New Year of Spring. Oh. Uh, so now I'm just trying to get as much money to upgrade my barn, my coop, and my house. And Ooh. once I've upgraded my house, I will uh, kindly ask somebody to be my spouse. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm still going around just giving gifts. Like, I always keep flowers and food in my inventory when I go into town. I'm just like, hey, K-pop man, have something. Oh, big burly dude, have something. Hey, singer dude, have something. Hey, pretty lady with a ponytail, have something. I love that. That's awesome. Just playing the field. I'm just throwing gifts at the wall, hoping to land a spouse. (laughs) Someone love me! And she throws flowers around. They call that love bombing, cat. Just letting you know. Well, it's a video game. I don't need to be... I I, I can act up. (laughs) I will pay for your affection, Catherine says. Then listen, it's a mechanic. You build them hearts, and at one point you win a heart. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It is fun. <laughs> well, what are you playing? <laughs> well, I got uh, my uh, blessed little hands on uh, Rise of the Ronin. So I have uh, started that and uh, more to come. Nice. Uh, I am still playing Garden Life, trying to make my way through. I'm at the point now where I'm just, I'm trying to get into the greenhouse and I'm trying to build. They've got these like flower arrangement statues in this like gallery area and they asked for like uh, like a litany of different flowers and different colors um and a fair amount of them so i'm in the process of trying to make sure i got all the different colors so that i could submit those um and also making sure that i have enough flowers because you know every time you, when you get a tulip you get one bulb right so like one flower out of one spot so you need to like keep going with that because you know that could take a while um uh, but i think I'm going to try something different. So I'm going away to Mexico in April. But what I find is oftentimes I will save a game before I go at like for when I'm on vacation, but I never can like get into it. So I want to try this time to like start a game before Mm. I go and Mm. then have it. So I'm thinking Dave, the diver. Ooh, that's a good one. On switch. Is that or dredge? Um, Um, Dredge is poopy though. Yeah. It's a little dark. A little dark. I, I, I'm just saying, like, vacation vibes. But, yeah, Dave the Diver kind of seems more vacation vibes, doesn't it? Doesn't it but, match like, the you can location do... you're going to? Like, not you... Well, kind of. There's ocean, oh. I suppose. But, like, you can do Dave the Diver on vacation, keep it low-key, come back, play Dredge, and then you'll be ready for their combined DLC. I know, and that is actually available in the uh, Nintendo Switch store. Like, I saw it there. The other day when I was just like perusing through being like, hmm, maybe I should get some of these now. Um, they're not super expensive right now either. They're like all under like 30 bucks or something. Oh, wow. Maybe each yeah. game. So like, that's kind of nice. So yeah, I'm going to try that and see if that'll like get me through. Maybe have like a few games started or something and then just see what I feel like. Because I do find it really hard to like start a game fresh. I need to like already have like the kinks worked out when it comes to the mechanics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. Are you going to bring your Switch with you when you go away? Play anything? Uh, I think Pascal will bring it, but like I'm probably... Whenever I travel, I'm like, oh, I'm going to bring a game and play it, and I end up... No. Uh, yeah. I end up getting very... Especially we're doing a visiting trip. Mm-hmm. Not a beach. Sat, sit on mm-hmm. the beach and waste away you. trip. So yeah. I'm going to get stimulated and overwhelmed. Um, by like all the museums and all the activities and stuff. So I usually end up just falling on the couch. So I'm my plan is to bring my iPad, maybe load a few games on it. Mm. Like um uh Rainbow Six Small. Took them to make a cute game for me to play some fucking Rainbow Six. So I've Rainbow been Rainbow Six Small. And I just saw that, I was like, that's adorable. I'm in. Like finally you fi- you found a way to convince me to play Rainbow Six. So I might just do some mobile game on my iPad or on my phone for like end of day unwind or just load up a few um, through through the library, either get some EPUBs or go and pick up a few literal books and just cool. bring a, a novel or two. We're only gone for 12 days, too. So um, it sounds like a long time, but honestly, I have a feeling that it's going to go by real fast. And we're also not in a hotel we're kind of like in a townhouse, so oh. um, we have a kitchen, so we have to like cook our meals, and you know, I'm trying to travel light, so I might actually have to do some laundry while we're there, like a a midway laundry, so we can pack less clothes. Like we're taking advantage of the fact that we're in an actual house to, you know, yeah, cook cool. our meals and mm-hmm. you know That's things nice. things like that. So 
or also be like renting bikes to go around because it's Amsterdam, like it's the Netherlands and, you mm-hmm. know, taking transit. So trying to travel light, trying to just take in the sights. So I think it's going to be a make sure I load a few and there's Wi-Fi everywhere. So it's yeah. going to be I think it's going to be for me. My entertainment is going to be music and YouTube at the end of the day and just kind of like. Good call. Yeah. Good call. Do you ladies want to go on a walk down memory card lane? Absolutely. Yep. Each week, the team will have to guess a historical game that would have been released during the time of this episode's airing. We'll start with its release date. I'll give you hints about where the uh, about the game, and the team will attempt to guess what that is. As always, talk it out. This game released March eighteenth, two thousand and four, in Japan, and later released September twenty first, two thousand and four, in North America. Let the guessing begin. That's a That's big span. That's a big, long-ass wait. Months. Six months? Yeah, usually, usually it's like six weeks, not six months. In 2004, mm. we're talking PlayStation 4. Or three. No, three. Are we? Um. <laughs> that sounds like about the time when we switched. 2004. 2004. Uh... Is PlayStation 3. Okay. I think, the next hint? Yeah, I think she's yes. trying to throw This it game out. came out on PlayStation 2. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I get my console release dates I think, mixed didn't it come up. Oh. 2006, the PlayStation 3? Yeah. It's like in that area where it gets muddled. Yeah, because uh, I was uh yeah, cuz I was out of grad out of grad school and in yeah, in t- Montreal, but I got it late. Yeah, I I got mine. I got mine late as well. My PlayStation Three. I got it late. Got it like in two thousand eight. Two jobs to buy that bitch. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) two jobs. Two jobs. Just the pilot. You guys remember that? Oh, you know that cartoon. Just the pilot. This gum has two jobs. Uh, Oh yeah, this is a bad commercials for like the halls gum. Anyway, anyways. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Released March eighteenth. Released in Japan. Two thousand and four in Japan. Then September 21st, 2004 in North America, and it came out on PlayStation 2. Okay. okay, okay. Jack and Dexter. No. Nope. I'm just going to, it's going to be one of those one time. Yeah. Katamari Damacy? <laughs> Catherine Smith DBA! What? No! Wow. Yes! <laughs> that was a total shot in the dark. <laughs> Yes, Katamari Damacy released March 18th, 20, uh, wow. 2004 in Japan and then came to North America September 21st, 2004. Came out on PlayStation 2. It's a third-person action-adventure video game. Puzzle action. Hold on. Third-person puzzle action video game. Damn, that's a lot. The game's plot is about a prince on a mission to rebuild the stars, constellations, and the moon, which were destroyed by his father in a drunken stupor. (laughs) (laughs) Physics play a large role in this game, and I wrote that on purpose to say a large role, because you roll everything (laughs) up. (laughs) It has been dubbed a sleeper hit. The The game's title translates to Clump Spirit. Literally, that's what it yeah. was. <laughs> the game didn't release in, in Europe until 14 years later when they released what? Katamari Damacy Reroll. It didn't go to Europe. Can you wow. believe that? Until they Crazy. did the reroll? Oh, yeah. or the remake or whatever? Yeah, or? That's exactly, yeah. And then uh, the game was developed by 10 people over a year and a half, and the time and budget restrictions forced the team to develop its unique look. Katamari Damacy. Wow! I wow! Great I was just too. And Catherine, yeah, no. You fucking rock! <laughs> I was just throwing <laughs> like, like oh Japanese games from that era at the wall. You <laughs> you need to do like you need to go on Jeopardy for this like the trivia. It's insane. Ah, yeah. uh, well, you know, it's like I said, I either know it or I don't, or like if it's a this one was a wild guess though. Well, this one was a wild I, guess. I don't know how you got it in two hints that were not. Easy. It's, it's always no. a miracle that I remember not. that that was a PlayStation 2 game and not a PS1 game. <laughs> All right, ladies, it's time to get into some, to some news. You ready to do that? Yes. Yep. Let's go. 
All right, time for some news. Um, not gonna lie, ladies, you're gonna be educating me because I've been so swamped in work stuff that uh, I have not had the mental capacity to do much over the past week. Besides the few times that I have jumped in to play Garden Life, which is so soothing, and that's why I do it. So, Cat, tell me what happened in the Xbox Partner Preview. Yeah, uh, before we start the Xbox Partner Preview, I'm just gonna shout out the Activision QA workers from the largest U.S. video game union yet. Oh yeah. So shout out to Microsoft for now having the largest union video game history. Uh, So organized with the help of the CWA, Activision Quality Assurance United has 600 members across Texas, California, and Minnesota. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a link to the full The Verge articles to have the details. Just wanted to shout out and say congratulations. Nice. And now in other Microsoft news, the Xbox (laughs) Partner Preview that happened on March 2024 um first off have you heard about the hit jrp online jrpg final fantasy <laughs> online that's a meme by the way final uh, fantasy 14 online hmm. is coming to xbox series x and s so i could do they have crossplay could i raid with my boyfriend probably in his i would, imagine, I would imagine they would where they would but and like when did game that Pass. game originally come out Final Fantasy fourteen online. It's really? been a hot. I I feel like we saw it when we were at E three twenty thirteen. Internet says September twenty second two thousand and ten. Whoa! Yeah. So there probably was like some sort of expansion or something that we saw. They've had like expansion, this. but they've also like rebuilt the game up. Of course, you know, like, they'd have the, to, right? The game was not doing great, and they kind of like redesigned it, and mm-hmm. then it took off. Uh, but yeah. Final Fantasy Online to Xbox. So now we can expand this meme to Xbox players. And it's going to be on Game Pass Ultimate. Hey, look, uh, memes should be shared with everybody, okay? Yep. So I might give it a try. Why not? It's on Game Pass. There you go. Um, other than that, there's Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess that you ah, mentioned in the, in the Fantasy that's Critic. That's what this is. Okay. Yeah. So that looks like an interesting game um, where you play a warrior that has like the boon of a goddess mm-hmm. and you go into village and you save villagers and then you give them roles and you make an army. And then at night you try to survive waves of monster that come in um, by Capcom. And it looks, it looks actually pretty interesting. Is it like a management sim or like, uh, I, I feel like it's more like a war asset. Slash okay. fighting game that it looks like. So you build your army and you kind of build your defense and then you fight monster wave of monsters. We've seen this before. Yeah, the we trailer. We didn't know what the gameplay yep. was. Yeah, we've seen okay, the trailer Okay, because it's really pretty. It is right, really yeah. pretty. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's that like, yeah, you got a, you know, a battlefield and you have certain amounts of mm-hmm. classes and they... You know, you place them and then you go and yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah, it looks interesting. It Honestly, does. if it land if it lands on uh it it is coming to Game Pass, I'm probably gonna try it. Like I'm I'm like I wanna play and discover more like JRPG type games, but like I don't have a PlayStation and sometimes I just don't wanna drop the money, I'm gonna be honest. Um well. Yeah. I'm coddled by Game Pass, so I'm happy to see Capcom and Bandai Namco and Square Enix bringing some stuff to Game Pass, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. Um, there's the Sinking City 2, where it's like an iconic Lovecraftian City of Arkham type game. Uh, so it's a sequel, apparently. And it's a full horror game. It looks interesting. Not gonna play it. <laughs> Too spooky. Like, Not gonna play uh, it. Uh, yeah. Like, and honestly, like, the trailer is actually pretty spooky. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like cool. it. Uh, Persona 3 Reload Expansion Pass because these games need to be fucking longer apparently. Nice! <laughs> uh, new costume, background music, and extended story! Get 100 to- more hours. Yeah. Uh, they they're shadow- just trying to build up they're, they're honestly huh. just trying to build up the hype so that when Persona 6 comes out it is like the biggest thing since sliced bread. Exactly. Well, hey, if, if the if the money machine is going, you might as well, you know, give it yeah. some, give it some wood to keep it churning, baby. You know. And everybody's talked about how good these games have been over yeah. the years. That like, yeah. I'm kind of happy that they're getting yeah the, uh, the TLC yeah. so that people can play it on uh, different platforms. And like Persona 
5 is just so damn good. I want to go back and play 4 and 3, which are other games that I could potentially get and put on my Switch for a trip, too. Exactly. Uh, but your trip is going to be just Persona. Um, <laughs> in Shadow Drop, uh, all of Stalker now on Xbox. Wow. Via backward compatibility. So Cult Classic, Shadow of Chernobyl, Clear Sky, and Call of Pripyat are also available today. So that's cool. I'm, that's not for me because first person pew pews give me the spew spew. Um, <laughs> Joel's the same. Yep. We have motion sickness. Yep. So. 100%. Yep. <laughs> I broke Leah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. that's the greatest analogy ever that's how we're classifying these games now first person pew pew gives cat the spew spew okay okay <laughs> oh I'm sorry I've had a long ass day too so oh I am a bit gosh. loopy um, but also what has Reflector Entertainment been doing ever since uh, they got a uh, I think it was like the Cirque du Soleil guy that launched the studio and they were doing a whole lot of nothing until they got purchased by Bandai Namco and now they actually have a game to show. So that's what Unknown 9 Awakening is. Um, And it looks like a fantasy type Mm -hmm. thing mixed with like reality and a bit of sci-fi. It's like Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. It it looks, yeah. Yeah, and obviously the main character kind of looks... uh, what's her name? The oh, you I, play Aya. Because you in play like Origins? in Assassin's in Origins and Odyssey, like the the girl that you play outside the Animus. Um, oh, oh, I forgot. It's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, yeah, it does look like her. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so you play the hero Haruna, who's played by Anya Chalotra. I think that's how you pronounce her name, but. It looks interesting. Like, honestly, I'm like, that's what you guys been cooking for a while. Because for a while, it was like a whole lot of nothing coming out of Reflector. So I think the Bandai Namco acquisition really, like, lit a fire under their ass. Yeah, that uh, looks nice. It looks good. And also, like, when I was first watching the trailer, it had, like, hints of um, Forspoken a little bit. Just, like, with some of her powers. And then... The one hand, like, does a lot of it, but I was like, I feel like this is what first spoke, I wish first spoken, <laughs> like, did a little bit. So, well, could, could be. Yeah. But could be the first spoken redemption arc. Mm-hmm. We don't have long to wait. It comes out summer 2024. It's true. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about yeah. that, actually. Yeah. You, you know what, though? When I just read the name, I had no freaking clue what this game was. Like it's a whole, that name I, is a whole lot of nothing. Let's be honest. A whole lot of nothing. I'm like, I kind of thought it was going to be like a, like a shooter or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But now I'm way more interested in seeing the trailer. I think the Unknown Nine is like tied to something in the story. Okay. So. It's like a sa- like it's like Assassin's Creed. If I just say Assassin's Creed, you're like, what the fuck does that mean? But when you get into the story, it's like mm. the creed of the assassins. They're a group. They fight the Templar, you know. And yeah. from what I saw in the trailer, they were like, oh, the Anai need to be stopped. I'm like, okay, okay, we got like an in lore in game thing, and yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. we're gonna I, get into it does into the nitty gritty. Seem though that it's coming to Game Pass, so. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about it, so I guess we'll have to wait and see if it comes to Game Pass. But the fact that they didn't announce it as Game Pass title makes me think it's not a Game Pass title. Mm-hmm. It probably isn't. Like, some of these, they're just announcing games that are yeah. coming. They probably just have a partnership to, like, have the trailer on Xbox first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. Th- for a multi-platform release. Yeah. you know. Um, the next one is I wish it was... <laughs> A game that I wish was something else because it looks so good. The story looks so good, but I hate platforming and transversal games. Now we uh, have two <clears throat> two big ones of these this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So from EA Original, it's Tale of Kinzara Zao. Uh, beautiful lands narrated by Abu, uh, Abu Bakar Salim. And it's like just this beautiful story about uh, a shaman and their special mask and this mask gives you power like it's very like afrocentric and it like finally we see games about like 
other cultures and diversity. And I'm like, yes, we've been talking about this forever. And then they're like, hey, it's a platform where you jump around and you zoom around and you use powers. I'm like, cool story, bro. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. I'm excited. I guess people... People yeah. who love these games will play it. Yes. Yeah, Joelle and I both enjoyed Prince of Persia, yeah. the yes. one this year, so we're going to yeah. enjoy this, too. I, 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 yeah. I do enjoy platformers. They, yeah. I, I feel like I can play them and be especially if it, Especially if it has that mode in it, like uh, Prince of Persia did, where it made you, like, it let you zip past. Yep. Like, accessibility oh. one, when you sucked, I'm like, I'm terrible at this! Zip past. Yeah. 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 And I, the, I, I could play the Prince of Persia one just because of that. Mm. Yep. Yeah, but they make it accessible to skip if you don't like it. And then I like this one, too, because it seems like you have a little bit more uh, power diversity where mm-hmm. there's different ways to, to solve different things. And um, it does it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a guacamole like type where you, you build and build and build. And also that you have a, you have a mm. uh, power up a tree for uh, scaling, which I think looks fun, and um, I did enjoy quite a few of the boss battles of Prince of Persia too. I thought they mm-hmm. were like kind of the right element of difficulty, where they weren't like I couldn't breeze through them in my first try, but it took me a little bit. So I don't know. This is, this seems just to have all the right stuff. So this 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 piqued my interest. Yeah. No, it, it looks like an amazing game. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I kind of want to watch uh, a YouTube wrap up of the story. Yeah. <clears throat> to be honest, I get that. Uh, um, net. Yes, I have a question about the next one. I yeah. thought Roblox was a kids game. I don't know why, but Chucky's coming to Roblox. Yeah, he's a doll, I, you know. And I a skipped, terrifying oh, doll. I, still a I doll. skipped over that trailer. I didn't even watch it. I saw oh. Chucky, and I was like, and "Wow, nope. cool." <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's is also like yeah used towards I, kids, so I don't know. Uh, some some kids are stronger and more braver than I am. Uh, anyway, Chucky's coming to Roblox. Uh, if you're interested, click the link. Watch the trailer for yourself. I don't want this. Um, new game revealed: Creatures of Ava, a creature saver game. So if y'all want the Pokemon or the uh, what's it called, Power, Power World, but without the violence, just the cute creature and the nice scenery. This is what it looks like. Oh, it's so pretty. So, see, you'll learn to understand and tame the creatures of planet Ava and let them lead you through a vari- variety of ecosystem in the hopes of saving the planet from a life-consuming infection. So that looks more like the co- like a cozier thing, less of a competitive mm-hmm. thing. Uh, I, I, I think it looks interesting. It's I don't know pretty. if it's my, I don't know if it's my kind of thing. But it could be my kind of thing on a di- on a weekend that I just want to look at pretty things. I volunteer as tribute to try this <laughs> game. <laughs> uh, after that, Monster Jam Showdown crushes it like monster trucks. Uh, it looks like crazy good fun. Um, and then the altar was a game. It's like an adventure survival and building game. I think that's more for you, Leah. It it, it looks very sci-fi, like almost like al- like alien vibes. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh, but it's a survival game where you kind of like have to build a, a habitat, like build a a space station type thing. Yeah, you only have so much time uh, to do it. And what I think, what kind of hooked me about this game is that you are like one scientist, but you have all these different things that you have to figure out, like to complete your ship to get off this planet. And so yeah. what he does is he clones like himself, but there's different, they're like alter egos, which is a play on the title called the altars. Right. So like he, he, I don't know if this is real. I'm just making this up, but like maybe he's the biologist, right. And he's stuck and he has to get out of here, but he doesn't understand the mechanics of the engine. And so mm-hmm. he has to clone himself, to, and that that version of him will learn about the engine, right? So he he's got to he duplicates himself to learn these different things, so they can all work together to get off the planet and survive. But apparently, like you have to have everyone get along, and so yeah. you get into these scenarios with yourself <laughs> where oh, man. like one so schizophrenic. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It does look really. Int- I think the. I, this I is more like out, the but. 
dissociative ident- uh, identity disorder, but make it like IRL. Yeah, uh, I'm going to play this. this it looks- has chaos yes. meets uh, simulation survival game. Yep. I'm into it. I'm into it. Yep. At first, too, and this is another one where it's like the the thumbnail picture looked mm-hmm. like. Um, what was that one that came out not too long ago? There's two space ones that recently came out. Returnal. Returnal. Yeah. And there was another one. Starfield? The C. No. Uh, coalition? Co- co- mm, damn. Oh, it didn't do right. super great. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, I looked at it and that's what I thought it was. Because it's just a dude in a space suit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or a dude face in a space suit. I wouldn't have got any of that. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad we scrubbed through that. Because, yeah, that, that seems more my alley. Um, we got three games left. So quickly, we got first Berserker Kazan, uh, mm-hmm. which looks like uh, a bit of a FromSoft, but make it like Final Fantasy ish JRPG. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It looks like it. It it looks like it features like it works on combat and boss fights and things like that. It looks like it's got a nice story. Um. You know, on a story of a betrayed hero who's seeking revenge against those who are betrayed and downfall. So basically a reason to go around slashing people. I mean, if it's got better accessibility and UX than from soft games, I'm willing to try it. This is a Simon S. Simon game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, seriously. Like, I'm just watching it and seeing the battles play out. And I'm like, yeah, this is Simon written all over it. Yeah. Um, and then Frostpunk 2. Coming to Game Pass mm-hmm. July twenty fourth, two thousand and four. So if if I remember correctly, like Frostpunk is a city survival. Like it's yep. it's like Sim City, but yep. spoopy. It's not too spoopy though. Like what it? Um, I played a, a, a few hours of it because it was on Game Pass. I knew the second one was coming, and I've watched quite a few uh, uh, on Twitch uh, streamers play it. It's a really fascinating uh, survivor sim. Uh, because you start off just like in this ice hole and you have a generator and you build your city around the generator and you have to, you know, create all these, you have to create your own economy in this concentrated space. Um, and it includes like everything and then people get sick. Um, people want to rise up to power. They can get, um, you know, disenchanted. Um, they can mutinize and... So you, you get to kind of control how you want to build your own town. Um, and you have to also, you know, the, the element of the weather comes into play as well. Where, like, if it's warmer, you could, you know, bring down your generator, which doesn't cost as much coal uh, to use. Otherwise, if it gets really cold, you got to, like, bump it up. And then maybe people will die or get sick or whatever. So um, it's really, really fun once you kind of learn the mechanics of it. It's very addicting, and so I'm excited to see what they do for uh, the second one because it looks like in the second one they add, they get more political and add, like, Mm. more factions um, of people that you have to manage, and so um, it's just pretty fun. Yeah, I'm going to have to check this one out, too. And finally, new game reveal, Sleight of Hand. Uh, This looks like you have to, it's a stealth game? And you infiltrate an old your old witch coven using a cursed deck of cards, mm-hmm. and it's like in the city of Taboo. It's very noir. Like the setting is very, like yeah. classic PI. Like, like hey, what does broad like you doing here in a city like this? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, you yes. must help me, sir. Find my husband. <laughs> like that kind of noir setting. So mm-hmm. I think that one like looks like my kind of thing. Like just running around and figuring out mysteries in an old witch coven, like. Yeah, mm-hmm. give me that little that little touch of the occult. Mm-hmm. Yes, just the like slight that. touch of the occult without a, it being spoopy. There's no date or nothing on that one, right? Just uh, the announced that <clears throat> it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, no, they've got like a. That's a cool thing. I don't know if you guys noticed at the top of the Xbox wire. There's like what looks like. Are they in release order? No, they can't be. They're all over the place. Yeah, the way that yeah, they drew it. Do you see this this like grid that they have here? Yeah. It's not in the same order that we're here on the sheet. So no. Yeah, I thought the sheet was probably like as I walked down the blog, it was either like in the order they were revealed, 
Possibly. That's quite possible, yeah. Yeah, there's no I didn't watch it whatsoever. either. Mm-mm. No, I, I don't watch these things live anymore. I just wait mm. for this article, and then I watch the trailers one mm. by one. Cool. But I did skip over the Chucky trailer for reals, though. <laughs> <laughs> I um, got that. Let's get, that out, uh, let's get out of the spooky, then, um, and go to Mario Day announcements, um, which all came out yesterday. Conveniently, a Sunday, because that's the way that March 10th fell this year Mm -hmm. um but that's okay they i was getting some press stuff in advance saying that like some announcements and stuff were coming out that day i like how they're doing this so you have like a touch point um part with the year plus i felt like there hasn't been a whole lot of nintendo news like i know we've had a few like directs and stuff but nothing like nothing like partner directs and things like that so uh yeah which of you ladies would like to walk through what we got yesterday from mario day 2024 sure i'll take it um go for the gold there wasn't a you know it wasn't too much it was kind of just enough to remind you that princess peach is coming out you know in a few days true so uh but there is uh, going to be a new super mario brothers movie it is already in development with Nintendo and Illumination. Um, And so that right now is scheduled to be released um, on April 3rd, 2026. Wow, it's my mom's birthday. They didn't give much information as to, like, what the setting is or if it's going to be, like, a sequel to the Mario Brothers movie or what's going to happen, but more to come uh, there. But there is more, more of that if you're into it. Uh, the movie. They would be silly not to make more. Oh, yes. Oh, of yeah. course. And I expect they'll keep the same cast. Yeah. They'll bring in some other characters that we haven't seen. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I I would I would be amiss to, to think that. Um, uh, in other news, uh, Paper Mario, a Thousand Year Door remake release date is announced. We knew that this remake was coming, uh, but we did get a date of May 23rd. 2024 so soon it's coming up Woo! quick um if paper mario isn't your thing and you're really itching to uh go back into the back catalog of luigi's mansion uh luigi's mansion 2 hd is gonna be released on june 27th um i played all the luigi mansions and that one is is, is worth it if you're interested um and you'll be able to play it uh hd which is great um coming on the switch Uh, Also, if you're interested in diving into the back catalog of Nintendo, uh, some Game Boy uh, games are going to come out um, on Nintendo Switch Online, which, by the way, Nintendo Switch Online sub is ridiculously cheap. It's $20 US for the year. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're interested, like, I would just say do it, but... We got a family account and we split that bill between like six people. Oh my gosh, like it's sick. So- <laughs> I pay like twelve dollars a year. A year, yeah. Well spent. It is, and there's a lot on there. So, uh, what's coming uh, though? Uh, this will be available when this episode is released. It's coming out on March twelfth. Uh, you're gonna get Doctor Mario uh, in Game Boy Color. You're gonna get Mario Golf, and in Game Boy Color, Mario Tennis. So you can uh, relive those uh, nostalgic memories. And also a, a very uh, light teaser. Uh, the Lego Mario Kart sets are announced and they will drop in 2025. Uh, the teaser is only 19 seconds long. It, it doesn't show too much. But I, I will say, though, if you have been following the Mario Lego sets, uh, you'll notice that they're, they're kind of in the, uh, the, the, the larger blocks, you know, really geared towards, like, younger builders. Um, mm-hmm. And it does look like these sets will be in those same uh, art style. Uh, so they'll be kind of the larger larger uh, block sets um, for youngins. And I, I bet that they will also work with the other Mario Lego sets because you can get an app. Uh, and you can like play with them, and they make noise, and there's lots of different things. So I'm assuming this will also be in the same vein. Um, a part of me like wants it to be like Hot Wheels with a track. Like that'd be sick. Oh, like if they were motorized, like that'd be so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But didn't wasn't there? What was the Mario Kart thing that came out not too long ago? That had like the track. 
with the gates to go through. It did? And you could play through the cameras. What was that? What was that? Mario Kart. Hold on. Mario Kart. Lego? Physical game. What was it called? Yeah, it was a Switch game called Live Mario Kart Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Oh yeah. Remember that? Vaguely. Yeah, that was Vaguely. the one where it came with the the carts and you you drove around as Mario in a cart. Oh yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, and it it went with your Switch. Yeah. 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 So Yeah, this one I hope I I mean honestly, I just hope it's like on a like a track. Where you have to yeah. build the track with the hot, like I just think that'd be that'd be cool. That would be fun. That would be fun. That'd be really cool. Um, so yeah, that is what um, a, f- a few little n- nougats uh, from Nintendo. I like how it was a combo of like, here's some stuff that's really far out, looking at you, movie. Yeah, and then here's some stuff that's you know we we haven't set dates yet for, but are coming fairly quickly mm-hmm. remakes, and then some stuff it's kind of soon in release i don't know why they just didn't release it on the 12th on the 10th like why wait until the 12th to drop those games is because it was like not a work day or like why not drop them today Uh, on the on the you know what i mean like just weird but i I really do like uh dr mario that's a great game if you like tetris and stuff Mm -hmm. it's kind of in that vein um but yeah it's good stuff a nice nice few nuggets yeah because we're all just Itching for that hardware <laughs> announcement. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, that's all. That That's it, right? Yeah, now. that's They're not coming on a Mario day. No, I on know. A I know, but, you know, we're all like, when is it? On a it? Sunday. But, yeah, yeah no, if you're, yeah. I know some people were, like, uh, looking forward to Paper Mario and also the Luigi's Mansion, uh, too. So yeah. those are coming quick. Yeah, it's a great, that Paper Mario Thousand Year Door game. I remember playing it back in when I was in grad school and it's awesome yep well ladies that pretty much closes out the show for this week as always check out the show notes on girlsongames.ca for links to all the stories mentioned this episode Catherine does a wonderful job for uh with that for us each week much appreciated and she's training joelle this week so good luck joelle yeah, no promises <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep the show going while i'm gone <laughs> exactly um as always if you have the power to rate and review this podcast on the podcasting platform where you're consuming it that would be much appreciated why it helps with discovery pushes us up in the rankings and we do read your comments to help us build our show uh, this is also the moment of the podcast where i give the crew the chance to show out their social media handle so you can follow them anywhere and everywhere online and chat video games with them Catherine, where can people find you I am C S D S B I N S C S B A on Twitter, Thread, Blue Sky, Instagram. I posted some shots from the WP the yeah, WPL there for my game this weekend. Uh but I'm always shit posting in the Girls on Games Discord. So you can usually find me there. Speaking of the Girls on Games Discord, we went on a wonderful Canadian music tangent today. Talking because about the podcast of the... after last week with the Nickelback Pokemon <laughs> mashup. Mashup, yes. yeah. yeah. We made more horror yes mashups like yes. sitting the old pokemon mashups and mm-hmm. snow in fall <laughs> i forgot that dude was canadian he is canadian joelle where can people find you people can find me on instagram at joelle lauren 87 uh that's where i do most of my posting uh also on x at gamer underscore comfy but uh every day all day posting on the girls on games discord uh come say hello and I am Leah Jew on most social media platforms, but of course, if you want to know everything there is to know about Girls on Games, you can track us down at The Girls on Games on X and Facebook. Just Girls on Games, no thought in there, on Instagram and threads. Discord.me slash Girls on Games to continue this lovely conversation and more. But of course, if you ever need to know anything at all, you can track it down at our home base. That is our website, girlsongames.ca. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Joelle. It's been another lovely week in video games. And uh, yeah, I-, I have a garden to tend. And then maybe fishing and setting up a sushi restaurant Ooh, yes, yes i think so all right see you next week bye bye bye, bye.